you yeah, know, that was another thing. That, and and, I, and I, I don't have too many more points that I want to make, but this is one that I wanted to get to. Uh, Quibi announced its shutdown. I think it was yesterday, right? And mm -hmm. I think it was the day before we did a stream and we were talking about how Meg Whitman was on the list of names that Joe Biden was floating. Do you, do you think there's anything sus about that timeline? Like, oh, hey, I'm on this list. I think I'm going to get this new gig. Let me, let me give $300 million back to my investors, to kick all of my employees to the curb. Tell them to play the, I will get back up again. Did you hear that? that? Literally, the guy was like, you should play the I'll get back up again troll song on their Skype call where he fired all of his employees. Yep. yep. This is a this is a great example to me uh, of just how, uh, you know. That was Jeffrey Katzenberg, not Meg Whitman. Was just to clarify. Oh, I was just clarifying. Jeffrey Katzenberg was the one that told everybody to listen to the troll song, not Meg Whitman, the person we're talking uh, about going in. Just to clarify, there's two uh, heads in the company. That's fair. Yeah. And Meg Whitman's the one being tapped potentially by the Biden administration. Uh, but yeah, this is an example of, you know, how basically the whole concept of a meritocracy is false because Quibi is a, co is a company that was extremely hyped, had tons of money pumped into its advertising. You know, you, me and you, uh, everyone's probably seen the stupid ads online for their various dumb failed shows. Uh, it didn't work at all. No one wanted anything. We all knew it was doomed from the start. Anytime you looked at the fucking stupid ass mini shows, like what's the one about the dude that was like, I'm stuck in my car in the middle of nowhere. I don't, I don't it's like a bad that. trailer for a movie you wouldn't want to watch. That's, that's what all of these shows look like. And basically this entire concept failed despite all of the marketing, all of the everything you could ever uh, really desire. Um, and and yet here they just get a fold up shop, uh, fire all their employees, and now Meg Whitman, the CEO, uh, is basically just going to get a lifeline, a career lifeline by the Biden admin directly into his administration. You know, the revolving door essentially. Although this is just straight out of the private sector, so it's extra kind of weird and gross, especially since she's a Republican. So it's like, yeah, uh, long time Republican, former CEO of eBay. Yep, big so, donor. Thank you for. Uh, you know, failing to make a product that anyone had any interest to like, I, I mean, literally, what is your claim to fame create? It's kind of like uh, when Carly Fiorina ran for president after destroying Hewlett and Packer. It's like, what is this? Do you, are you proud of your resume? Like, well, it, it, it's funny. There's actually, I don't know if it's in this, I think it was actually in a Wall Street Journal or article I was reading about this yesterday when Aquibi went down and they were like, you know, we could have given it another go and, and tried to make this product work. But instead we laid off all our employees and gave $350 million back to the investors. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's oh, that's what you did. Yep. Uh, and as, yeah, this as if this was a selfless act. Yep. Uh, thank you. I'm sure the investors were uh, glad given the, like I said, the state of this company, which has just been a complete disgrace, a, a laughing stock, essentially, especially again, given the marketing budget, like how can you fail this miserably with so There's much? So many big marketing. names, you know, Kevin yeah. Hart, uh, Chrissy and, Teigen. Yeah. Chrissy, she had that like Chrissy's court or something. Like, you, yeah. You the courtroom drama. drama or, yeah. Like what, what is this show? Like, it's just like, it's all, it's all such a, like a fellow kids thing too. It's like, Oh, these kids are into TikToks, maybe they'll like it if we make TV shows five minutes long. Like all these kids can't pay attention to nothing. <laughs> Let's give them Adderall and quick it, TV. Have you ever heard of YouTube? It's literally people making basically that like quick content, quick you know internet series type content, but it's actually like uh, you know inventive and original because it's made by real people. For I mean, obviously YouTube's getting more and more corporatized, but that was the original appeal of YouTube was that it was uh, you know broadcast yourself. It was people making stuff that was uh, edgy and outside of the um, you know, mainstream of Hollywood outside of the gatekeepers of cable television. That's why it became popular. So to basically try to apply the, you know, oh, let's make short YouTube style videos, but with the, uh, you know, production value and, uh, you know, sensibilities of Hollywood content. It's like, and they're just going to assume it's popular because we have short, these the millennials and zennials have short attention span. Like it's just a dumb, uh, failed uh, stimulation, stimulation, Gavin, you need <laughs> We can look for mind can only be spoon fed bite sized bits of, you know, sugary stimulations. <laughs> yep, that's essentially what the concept was. And and again, maybe if they'd had some decent programming on it, it would have done better. But it seems like there wasn't a single, uh, you know, show or property to come out of this that anyone cared about at all. Uh, so I guess we can have more of Meg Whitman's brilliant ideas and great innovations to look forward to th this time as a governmental. Uh, yeah, know. has a governing body and uh, a, an executive role in the Biden administration. Yeah, yeah. sounds great. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what else 
just random like is there does meg whitman has she been you know like talking shit on trump lately is there a reason why she's so uh she was also at the you know convention like i, I what is it about her that i don't know i mean yeah i think i think i think she's like a probably a never trumper i don't know a ton about her i know that she was at ebay before she was at quibi yeah. i know that she likely is part of that whole you know uh you know white feminist conservative bunch i i mean i'm just broad stroking it based on her credentials but that white, would be my guest speaking of white feminism do you have any interest in watching the the show fierce queens about female wild animals narrated by reese witherspoon because that's some of the great content reese that Witherspoon's husband hollywood agent jim toff oh yeah but reese witherspoon apparently narrated the the show oh oh well, gotcha uh, it looks like toff he was head of content acquisition but, oh wow he did a great job too yeah <laughs> the head of quibi's talent uh, acquisition he he really and again all of these people are obscenely rich they get a bathe in money at night while people are starving on the streets outside meanwhile they can't even come up with a streaming service that literally five people in this country care to tune into. Like if you're ever interested in reading a good uh, proletariat take on Hollywood, I do recommend uh, Kevin Smith's much maligned blog post, Greasy Reasy. Uh, uh, that's about three, two and a half decades old, probably, but it's well worth that it, it stands up. Yeah, that, that probably is definitely worth revisiting. I didn't know that the Witherspoon, uh, you know, clan had any, uh, you know, interest in this Quibi thing, but apparently they're part of it. So yeah, yeah, the Steven Spielberg signed up. Like, what is this? Spielberg uh, even got in there. Also, uh, I'll just remind everyone that is involved at all in the film community that not even a couple years ago, Steven Spielberg was out there talking shit on Netflix for destroying yeah. cinema. But now he, he signed with Quibi, which is literally like the opposite of cinema in every sense, uh, you know, when it comes to presentation. Yeah, at least at least Quentin Tarantino puts his money where his mouth is on the whole film sure. argument. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. Because I mean, I guess a better comparison would be James Cameron. At least James Cameron puts his money where his mouth or is. Or like, Nolan or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But um, that's really embarrassing that Spielberg decided, got, got in on this after chastising Netflix for, uh, you know, making better movies than most actual studios do. So, yeah. oh, God, that's that's cringy. And this is whole. this is just so emblematic of how... Uh, you know, the club works. Like I said, there is no meritocracy if you can create a massive failure like this and then go on to, you know, still be rich. A better game with yeah. more power. Yeah. 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 Uh, it also kind of reminds me of Doug Jones, who's about to probably get ousted. Uh, in oh, he's going to lose fat in his election. Yeah. And Trump's and Biden's basically just going to also give him a career lifeline, essentially, uh, by hiring him into his administration after even though he was a, you know, pretty pathetic milk toast representative. So. You know, that's that's a you know, that's the only one because he was running against a literal pedophile. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway.